Coach, how are we doing today? Good. All right, everybody. Um, I have you all muted. Um, same deal. I'll call on you and I'll unmute you uh, to ask a question. Um, let's start with Greg Pickle with Penn Live. Good morning, Coach. How are you doing? Good morning, Greg. Good morning. Hey, I'm just curious what you saw from the guys during winter workouts, sort of who stepped up into that leadership role um, during – now, the time that you guys were all on campus and what development you maybe saw from some of the guys like Noah Kane and Devin Ford, who saw time last year, but maybe not as much as the guy like Journey Brown. Well, I think they all got the mentality that, you know, we, we got to do better than what we did last year. So how do we get better? You know, because what I did last year don't matter this year. So, you know, we talked about pushing each other uh, physically, mentally, um, learn how to prepare different you know, to, to have a target on your back. Cause last year you've always been the weak link. Now everybody gonna look at you as one of the better groups in the country. So what are you gonna do to get better? And, you know, we did a great job in winning condition, pairing them up differently every day. Hey, this skill set may be better for this player, but that player, but learn how to push yourself. You know, I thought was really, was cool was, you know, all them guys pushing themselves to run with journey, you know, been to try to compete and beat him in some of the, sprint drills, you know, just different things to compete to get that competitive nature going. Rich Garcella, Reading Eagle. Hey, J1, thanks for your time today. I hope you're well. You too, Rich. Can you tell me what you think uh, Journey's performance in the Cotton Bowl can do for him going forward? And also, as a follow-up, what can Noah Kane's performance in the bowl game do for him? Uh, I think – uh, confidence, you know, that you feel like you can do against anybody. I'll, I'll go back. I'll go back from journey for journey, you know, Minnesota game. I mean, played his tail off. And then what he did to Ohio State in the second half was probably as impressive as anybody in the country. I will say this, the last four or five games, and I know I'm biased, but I thought Journey Brown was playing as good as any running back in the country. I mean, he got freakish athletic ability and strength that – you know, he's finally starting to tap into it. I think the thing that I was so impressed in the bowl game is trying to finally get him to play as fast as he is. You know, I thought he finally starting to trust his track speed to football now. The way he separated on that one run, what, 50, 60-yard run. I mean, he was – that's what I've been trying to bring out of him the last couple of years, and I think now he sees it. I think he carried that over into winning condition. As far as Noah – he never lacks confidence, you know. It was him just getting healthy, you know, being back the guy that we we saw early in the year, you know. Um, you get those nicks, you know, and, and muscles, sometimes they take a long time to heal, you know. It just took a process, especially with a kid who's powerful he is and run the way he, the way he does. And, you know, it just took a time to get healed. And I think getting him back in the bowl game, you know, got his confidence back, you know. I. I think those two guys are going to do a great job going forward, but also be cautious. Don't don't count out Devin Ford. I mean, he's a kid that he is one of those physically gifted kids. I think he's a kid that, you know, you're going to see a whole nother level of Devin going forward. I think he's a kid who for the first time probably was, you know, like all freshmen enjoying college a little bit too much. Not saying he was partying, but just, you know, that much freedom. You know, I think it, it happened easy to him early, and he forgot that you got to do it every week. Well, those kids just kept escalating, getting better throughout the process. So I think he had a great winning condition. I'm really excited about him. I, I view all three of those guys in my mind as starters right now. Next up is let's do Bob Flounders Harrisburg. Hold on, Bob. Having a Slight technical difficulty here. All right, go ahead. Hey, Juwan, thanks for your time. You too, Bob. Uh, just to follow up on on Devin, I, I think he he kind of gets overlooked because I know you get a lot you get asked a lot about Journey and, and Noah. It, it sounds like you think uh, a lot of him. What would you say his ceiling is, and um, what do you what do you expect from him? maybe in year two, what, what does he kind of bring to the room? Is he different than those guys or, and how big of a gap maybe is there between Devin and the rest or is there a gap at all? I don't think the gap far. I think this kid is so physically gifted, man. He got the best hips I ever seen out of a, of a, of a player. I mean, he can sink his hips and explode through the smallest crease. I mean, to him was getting bigger, 
this winning condition was huge. I mean, this is the first time he had one where a guy like Noah came in and had a winning condition. Journey had multiple. I think him getting stronger to be able to take on blitz. I think, you know, just all those stuff that you like to see out of a young player go through, he finally got that to this this winning condition. You know, suck it kind of taken away from him, but we understand that situation. But I'm excited. I think he's going to get faster. I think, you know, he can be a problem matching up, you know, with linebackers and coverage. I think he's – He's going to play football for a long time, in my opinion. Mark Brennan, Lions 247. What can you tell us about Koziah? Uh, I know you didn't have an awful lot of chance to work with him, but you had some. And then how difficult do you think this is for him not having the opportunity to play in spring ball when, you know, he kind of came out of, of high school early? You know, I think that was one of his sole purposes or one of his primary purposes for doing it. Well, I think the best thing I can explain is he got over the homesickness, you know, because a lot of times we take for granted when you bring these mid-year kids in, that is easy. That's the hardest part because they come in January and most of the coaches on the road recruiting, so he didn't get to see the same faces that are recruiting him. And I think him battling through January to get to February, which is the hardest time when a condition made to go through early struggles, um, it, it built character for the kid. And, and I think we did enough that he got – pieces of it, you know, with our meetings and our walkthrough so he can kind of feel like, you know what, um, I belong here, you know. I, I use him as an example, like the last part of winning condition, I saw a kid who was shy, sit back, and then I paired him up with Journey because he got that type of speed, and it was impressive watching them two doing shuttle for, run versus each other and sprint versus each other, where Journey had looked over one time and said, man, this kid can run. He pushed him, so you know, now he understands, you know what, I, I can play on this level. So I'm excited to watch him go forward. You know, he does a great job in our, our Zoom meetings that we have throughout the week of retaining stuff that we put in early. So, I, you know, he's another kid who's going to be, I think, going to be extremely talented um, with a talented room. And I think he'll get better because the guys he's in the room with. Next up is Mike Gross, Lancaster. Hi, Coach. Thanks for today. Um, what have you learned about your guys and what have you learned about maybe your your own ability to coach and teach from this remote learning stuff that you've had to do? I, I learned this, that we all can evolve. You know, um, you know, there's some things out there in life that's bigger than football and we all going through it um, and, and this shall pass. Um, but it shouldn't slow us down. It shouldn't show, slow us down being a human, to having still interaction where it's about football, about life. Uh, you know, we always preach family, and I think it's more prevalent now than ever to be able to get on FaceTime with our guys, get on Zoom with our guys. And, and, and I'm a little different. I'm not just going to talk ball. I want to make sure they're in a good place because this, this whole corona is affecting all of us in different, you know, aspects of our life, you know. And, and for a lot of times, we're not in control when those kids home. You know, they got stuff they have to do with their parents. So just trying to keep them engaged and try to take their mind off different things because, like I said, we all affected by this in different ways. So it's been great. I mean, our guys was already using Zoom from school. So, hell, they taught me how to use some stuff. So it's been great, you know, and also let you know you can work from home. You know, you don't have to sit in the office all day and still be able to be functioning you know, with, with, with install and then learning and getting better. John Patishnock, happyvalley.com. Hey, good morning, Jay Juan. I appreciate the time and hope you're doing well. You too, brother. Hey, how would you describe James's leadership and, and how has he kept the program moving forward during this time when everyone is staying at home and is coaching and is learning remotely? I mean, I always think, you know, coach always been a guy who can, you know, to push the envelope to get better. You know, if you stay in status quo, you're not getting better. So, you know, we all learn together um, how we can work remotely. You know, we still have our staff meetings in the morning. Um, you know, anything that needs to be talked about, we all talked about. And I, the thing I love about coaches, everybody have a voice. You know, everybody have a, 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 a slot where you can say what you need to say, you know, whether we all agree with it or not agree with it. But any day when we leave that meeting, we all agree with it. So. I respect the hell out of coach for that because you've been some places it's, it's a dictatorship and it's one way being done. Um, I got a number of respect for coach. I mean, I, the way he, 
he developed leadership throughout the program, not only just from the players, but his coaches. You know, when he said he want what's best for his staff, I, he really means that. And I think he's an unbelievable person to be up under to learn, you know, if you ever want to be a head coach and how to lead a program. I mean, it's, it's not by chance where we at. And I think a lot of that is credit to Coach Franklin. Next up, Audrey Snyder, The Athletic. Hey, J1. Thanks for your time this morning. You too, Audrey. A um, little bit different note here, but I'm just kind of wondering, you know, if, if you look at the way that recruiting has changed over time, obviously you guys aren't able to get out on the road right now, missing that spring evaluation period. Uh, we'll see what happens with camps. But is this a time where you guys maybe can buy into huddle highlights a little bit more than usual? Or do you have to kind of be – Cautious with some of that, because I know James has said before, anybody can look pretty good on a, you know, a short amount of highlights. Um, I, I'll say this. I, I think what helped, like, one thing that helped us, you know, we signed our whole class in December. So a lot of us were able to get on the road in January and basically do area and position recruit. At least I did. So I got a chance to see a lot of these kids up close um, to match their film. I think the biggest thing for me, I'm a big guy. I don't like to sign off on a kid unless I see him live, you know, practice or game, because I want to see how he compete when it's tough. Um, so it hurts you a little bit on that that aspect. But you know what? I, I do think you value, you have to value film. You know, that the honest guy don't lie. And then you find out what type of competition the kid playing, because I think now you can match both of them together. But I, I like some people, I don't know how you do not value game film. Like that matters. That that you can see so much in a film on on why you should recruit a kid and why you should not recruit a kid. In my opinion. Next up is Donnie Collins, Times Tribune. Hey Jay Wan, thanks for doing this today. No problem. <clears throat> What's it been like getting to know Kirk the last couple of months? What what is his ex experience? You know, with, with kind of coaching every position on the offense. You know, how, how's that how's that kind of helped toward, you know, getting you guys to the next level? I mean, with Kirk, he's just an old ball coach. I mean, all he want to do is coach ball. It, it, um, he's a guy full of a lot of knowledge. Um, I'm sure, you know, he, he came in the same way, open minded. You know, he came in and it's, this is not just going to be what we did in Minnesota, what you guys did at Penn State. I mean, he was willing to to put a playbook together that made sense for all of us. Um, you know, we all had an opinion. Um, we all had pieces in it, and, and that's a lot of credit to Kurt and not being an ego guy. I mean, he's an unbelievable man. Um, I think his structure, how he's going to go about details and being precise on everything is, is, is going to be really, really impressive going forward for us and getting these kids to play at a high speed. You know, I, I feel like, you know, what we installed early in the carryover we could have went out there and practiced right now with our kids being off campus because how detailed we've left coming out of those meetings and having Kurt around in January, you know, in December in the bowl game was huge. He got a chance to evaluate the roster to see the strength and weakness and, and what we can get better at. So, I mean, he's a great guy to work for. Um, like I said, a humble dude, you know, not, not one of the ego guys, you know, um, mad scientist. If he, if he is, he at least hiding it though. But he's great to work for, you know, he, like you said, he, he coached every position so he can see it, you know, whether from uh, up front blocking, which is always key to route uh, being on time and quarterback being precision with their drops and getting rid of the ball on time. So I, I think it's going to be great for us going forward. Next up is Tyler Donahue, Lions 247. Hey, good morning. Thank you for the time. Anytime, Tom. Um, you just signed back-to-back -back years, uh, a couple four-star running back recruits. Um, obviously, the crowded room has been talked about quite a bit. H how do you go about recruiting guys to follow up those couple classes um, right now? And, and, and also, just kind of playing off that uh, last class, Kevon Lee, you haven't had a chance to really talk to us about him to this point. What, does, what kind of dynamics does he bring in uh, to that room for you guys in 2020? Well, I don't it's, I don't really like to talk about the kids till they get here. You know, I, I think he'll be a kid that fit our room. I mean, he's built the right way. I mean, he's going to be an unbelievable big kid with, uh, you know, great football movements. So, you know, until we get him here, you know, I, I like to withhold a little bit on him. I, I think 
you know, filling our room, you know, is it, the it, we have a great culture here at the running back position. Uh, you know, if you were running back, why wouldn't you want to come to Penn State? You know, everybody said, well, you signed two this year, you signed two last year. Um, you know what? The teams that win it every year, they're doing the same thing. Um, and and, I, and anywhere you go, you're going to have to compete. You know, and I think we'll look different here, and I think some other programs will look different where you sign these kids, you know, in pairs on the last couple of years, but you also, you know, these kids leaving school early and the guys we recruiting going to be high level guys, you know, you're going to be making decisions with kids leaving after their junior year. You know, you hope to get them to their senior year, but you have to have depth. You know, when I came in here, you know, we was, we was riddled with the depth problem. You know, we had uh, Mark Allen who was leaving, uh, JT was leaving, you know, Miles left early and we into a position where we lost three guys in one year. You know, if we didn't sign Noah and Devin, we'd have been in trouble going forward because nobody, you know, I didn't even see, and I knew Journey had potential, but I didn't see him developing the way he has until, you know, we actually got on the field. So I, I just think you have to protect yourself a little bit, especially when the climate where it's easy for kids to, to quit and transfer now instead of fight sometimes. So you, you got to protect yourself a little bit in that way too. Next up, Nubias Wilborn, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Hey, Coach, good to meet you. You too. Um, question for you. Um, you mentioned earlier about how working from home, you can do it. Is that something you would want to see maybe stay even after the world, quote unquote, goes back to normal? No. I like to be in the presence. You know, I like the kids around me. I like, I like to be able to physically see them and sit in that room. So if they ask questions, I can get them to draw them on the board. Uh, I just think – as a human element, interaction with the people you coaching, uh, that means more than sitting behind a computer screen. My eyes hurt. I'm wearing glasses now because I've been sitting behind the computer so long. Um, but it also shows you that even when you're on vacation and you're away from each other, you can still get on a screen and everybody can function and still be able to be day-to-day -day with kids, whether us on vacation, they're on vacation, they want to talk about something. So you, you see football a little different than what you have in the past, you know, and um, – it is who knows where it's going to go next, but, um, you know, at least we prepare for it now, you know, and not let this be excuse of, of why we behind when we, when this pandemic ever ends. Next up is Frank Bodani, York daily record. Hey, good to talk to you, coach. Thank you. you too, Frank. Go back to journey Brown. You mentioned at the beginning a little bit about how he seems, maybe he's just being able to find, that track speed on the football field. I mean, he may be the fastest sprinter Penn State's ever gotten. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Have we, so you almost make it seem like maybe we're going to see a different journey Brown in, in a sense. This well, I almost compare him. If you really, to me, this is how I compare him all. Basically it's all, uh, all those three guys we talked about early, him, Devin and Noah are basically like sophomores to me now. Is what you want to see. This this base with a freshman year, and you take and you say, "Why you say that?" Because well, Journey hadn't played in two years, really, and now we starting to see what certain kids' red shirt and development over time can do for kids. When you got the intangibles, and you're willing to work and be patient. He's a prime example of that. I mean, now he's playing as a football player. When I first got here, I said he was a track kid playing football, and I meant that. But that was not being negative. I mean, he was a fast kid. He had measurables, he had talent, he just didn't know how to tap into it. And over time, he bought into it. It's amazing, you go back to Illinois, he got that first touchdown on a sweep. His his whole demeanor and confidence started changing on that one play. And we gradually bring him along throughout the season. And then I thought this spring, he had a great spring. I mean, it was not surprising that he was a starter for us down the road, because I thought he could win the job. And at camp, you know, he, he he went neck and neck with uh, Ricky. Um, it was one day that made a difference between me picking him to start and not the starter. Um, but the kid kept working, and he kept trying to figure it out. And then it all just, you know, that light bulb went off. And then now, I mean, he's playing. He's doing stuff that it's amazing to see. I, I thought the last five games, I would have said he was playing as good as Miles played the year before. And it's not knock on Miles, but – the way he was making safeties miss and he racing the defense, I mean, like, that's, that's impressive. You, you don't wake up with that gift every day. And I think he's tapping into it. I don't think he's satisfied. 
I think he's hungry because now he got a taste of it and he realized how good he can be going forward. Time for a couple more. Next up is John Sauber with the Center Daily Times. Hey, J1. Hope you're doing well. Uh, with with the blue-white game being, you know, originally scheduled for this coming weekend, does it start to set in more that, that things are, of course, not where they're supposed to be at right now? I think if – I don't – I mean, I, it's hard for me to speak for everybody, but <laughs> it's set into me a long time ago, you know, when – this thing is real. I mean, you got people dying. Um, it's unexplainable. Um, you know, my, my heart goes out to the first responders and the volunteers that's, you know, trying to keep this country safe. Um, so to me, it's real. I mean, it, it, and I hope it's real for everybody else that, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to wait to that moment to affect somebody next to you. Then you realize, you know, I should take this thing serious. So, you know, we still preparing, you know, no different whether we was playing today or tomorrow. So I, I, I don't, approach hasn't changed um, to going forward. So, you know, if we miss one practice in spring, you know, I look at it this way, you know, we kept our kids healthy going into the fall. You know, I, you, you got you to gotta channel, channel that um, your thought process a little bit different, and we all do. You're on mute, Greg. Thank you. Last question is Jerry DePaula, Pittsburgh Tribune Review. Thanks for your time today, Coach. My, my question to you is, is um, from a physicality standpoint, how much time will your guys need to be ready for the first day of training camp, whenever that is? And how much time are they going to need after that for the first game of the season, whenever that is? Man, Jay, I, that's a tough question, Jerry. It really is. Um, I don't know that answer. I, I would think it is um, – you know, you go back to being a high school coach. Um, these kids are, are, are naturally uh, different now. You know, they've been training their whole life. Um, the, most of these kids are still ready to work out, you know, on their own at home. Some places still got gym. You know, I, I would think, you know, a month or two months, we can get these kids up to speed. You know, you just you just got to be able to have a balance between football and training to make sure they're in shape. Cause what you don't want to do is rush these kids and they pull muscles and then you got long longevity injuries that's going to flare up throughout the season. So, you know, I think we all got to be on the same page, you know, from weight training to, to the medical staff, to nutrition. I mean, we, it's, it's going to be a process that we all have, gonna have to dig in and find out what's right. And it's going to be beyond my opinion on what's, on what that takes, you know, it's going to, it's going to take all of us. All right. Thank you very much, coach. And thank you everybody for joining us today.